So we talked about Scala, we talked about Spark, we finally have all the fundamentals we need to talk about Spark streaming itself. Finally, huh? Finally getting there. All right, so what's the big deal about Spark streaming? Why is it important? Well, big data never stops, right? I mean, if you just use Spark by itself, it's great for processing massive data sets in one fell swoop. You know, maybe you have a big corpus of data and you just need a one-time answer out of it for some reason. Or maybe, you know, running this job once a day is sufficient for whatever you're trying to accomplish. Maybe you're just generating some daily report. It's fine, you know, just use Spark for that. But what if you want to update your results in real time? What if instead of processing this giant data set periodically, you just process the new bits that come in as they come and you just keep updating your results over time, basically forever? Wouldn't that be kind of cool? Well, that's what Spark Streaming does. So instead of huge batch jobs, you can analyze your data as it comes in, one little section at a time, and keep aggregating those results as you go. So where are some examples of using that? Well, let's say you have clickstream data coming in from a fleet of web servers. You know, maybe you're running some massive website out there and you actually can use Spark Streaming to connect to an input stream of web logs coming in from this entire fleet of web servers. You know, parse that data out in real time using Spark Streaming and transform that data however you want. You know, maybe keep track of sessions, keep track of how much people are buying, whatever it is. And you can do that all in real time with Spark Streaming. Another hot application of Spark Streaming is the whole Internet of Things thing that's going on that venture capitalists are so excited about these days. But imagine you have streams of data coming from lots and lots of sensors, right? As part of some sort of Internet of Things application. You could use Spark Streaming to aggregate all that sensor information into one place and do that at a very large scale in a very reliable manner. So Spark Streaming is also an enabling technology for the vision of the Internet of Things, if that comes to pass. At a high level, this is how it looks. So basically we have data streams coming in from some source. Like I said, it could be sensors, it could be web logs, it could be something else entirely, just something feeding us data. And we have a receiver on Spark Streaming that listens for that data and ingests it into Spark Streaming somehow. So we'll see that there's a lot of different kinds of receivers we can set up for different kinds of data. And at that point, it breaks that data up, that data stream up into a bunch of itty bitty little RDDs that maybe contain one second's worth of data or whatever we configure it to. And these just keep getting generated and generated over and over and over again and we just keep transforming them and processing them over and over and over again. And the output of that transformation can get sent off to wherever we want. Maybe we're updating some external database with some information that we're aggregating or you know, some subset of the data that we consumed. Whatever you want to do, this is kind of how it looks. You have like a big stream of information coming from potentially multiple sources at once. We have a receiver that listens to those data sources and logically it transforms it into RDDs like we saw in our, with our word count example that we can operate on just like Spark does normally. And we can transform those, reduce them, whatever we want to do and send the output wherever we want also in a distributed manner. Okay. So the real power of this is that the processing of all those RDDs, remember we broke it up into little chunks. We have you know different bits of it going on in different places. We can actually distribute that amongst a cluster. So even if you have a massive influx of data coming in from a massive web, seat, web, web fleet or a massive fleet of sensors, it's fine. You know We can actually horizontally distribute this problem and process those little smaller RDDs from our stream across an entire cluster of computers if need be. Now, another important uh, abstraction in Spark Streaming is what we call the D stream, and that stands for discretized screen streams. Okay, so basically, the logical stream of information that just goes on and on forever is called a D stream in Spark Streaming, and that stream is broken up into these discrete RDDs of a given batch size. So you can think of a D stream as being the entire stream of data coming in from your receivers, and that D stream in turn is comprised of a lot of little, much smaller RDDs that contain the actual information. And this is a very useful abstraction in Spark Streaming because we can apply transforms and actions to the D stream as a whole instead of individual RDDs in many cases. So even though we can still access individual RDDs from within a D stream, often we can just apply an operation to the D stream itself and describe the chain of transformations and actions that we want to apply to our data entirely in terms of the D stream. So you can see the power of that. By just writing some very simple scripting code on the D stream, you can actually flow that data, that logic down to these individual RDDs that could be getting executed and evaluated any place on a cluster. So all that complexity 
of breaking that DStream into little manageable chunks over time that might be distributed. It's all hidden from you. You don't have to worry about that with Spark Streaming. It's a beautiful thing. So what are some things you can do with DStreams? Well, a lot of stuff you can do with RDDs. You can apply map functions to them that can transform the information in them however you want. You can flat map them, so bust them out into even more or fewer elements if you want. You can filter them, and you can do reductions on them, reduce by key. So all the important things that you might do in an RDD, you can also apply to a DStream as a whole. Another thing you can do, and we'll get into this in more detail later in the course, is keep track of stateful data. So as DStreams flow through the system, you can actually keep track of state that's keyed by some value. So a good example would be uh, session data in a clickstream. So I could actually break down activity by IP address or some session identifier and actually keep track of the clickstream by session ID over time. And that could be stateful information that actually persists across the individual RDDs of my DStream. You can use that to keep running totals of things too and things like that. So if you want to do more than just transform an input stream of data and sort of extract the bits you want and put it somewhere else. You can also use stateful data to actually keep track of running totals or stateful data over time as well. So there's a lot you can do with Spark Streaming. It's a very flexible system. So let's go back and look at that Twitter example that we ran really early on in the course and go into a little more, more detail about what it's actually doing now that we understand the concepts a little bit better. 